Now, I am speaking on what I've entitled opportunities during evil days or opportunities in evil days. Opportunities in evil days. We want to read from Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 15. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity, because the days are evil. Making the most, verse 16, of every opportunity, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, Paul writing to the Ephesians, we don't have time to explain or to give the background to this epistle. But what catches my attention is that make the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Now, you know, for him to say the days are evil and then he says that make the most out of every opportunity. It means that in days of evil, there are opportunities. So days of evil are not just saddled with um, evil things and then you can't see anything all about complaining. Paul is saying that even in the days of evil, there are opportunities. And when you have those opportunities, he's saying that make the most of those opportunities. Well, I believe that what we are going through now are days of evil. Where a virus all over the world is killing people. Factories are shut down. Nations are overwhelmed. Flights are cancelled. These are evil days. These are days where things are not normal. They are not normal days. But Paul is saying that in these days, make the most out of every opportunity. Make the most. It means that there are opportunities. There are things there are good things we can find in these evil days. And then when we find those opportunities, we make the most out of them. Now, one of the opportunities we find in these days is the opportunity called lockdown. Well, people have different interpretations. I want to tell you that in this very season where others are crying, someone too has hit a jackpot. Yeah, someone has hit a serious jackpot. And the person is wishing, if not for the lethal nature of the virus, the person is wishing that life continues this way because it has become a big business for some people. So, there are those two who have finally had their families together. At least for a long period of time, we have father, mother, and children all in the house. What an opportunity. And then for others, for the first time, so many things they never imagined. It's just like a phone that has been infected with a virus and then you have to do factory reset. You have to, you have to format it again to its normal. And so sometimes, because life has been up and down, we wake up, we go to work, parents are not having time for their children, parents are not giving attention to their children. Um, the opportunity called lockdown or the opportunity this whole thing has brought us we can make the most out of this opportunity and i trust that as we do that you know we will come out of this thing and not feel that we have lost anything well i remember when i completed um senior high school now people complete senior high school and then they they go straight to the university but when i completed senior high school in our time 
you had to compulsorily really wait for one year at home before you enter the university. And then I waited for one year, I applied, and I was not given the opportunity to study in the university. And so it meant that I had to stay home for another year, another year two years. And sometimes when you are in church, and then you have your own age mates who have come back from school, from university. They come and then they come and give a testimony. Praise God. I went to school. I'm in the first year. I want to praise God. And then you're wondering. You are wondering because you're at home. You completed school with these people and you're wondering what it is. But you see, in my life, there are two main years. I remember in those years, I really made the most out of those years. It was that extra year I stayed home. One of those years was that extra year I stayed home. No, I didn't waste it. We spent all our time doing reading, praying, doing all that we were supposed to do. I made the most of that opportunity. And so, by the time I got to the university, though my mates were a year ahead, at least the only difference was that they knew they were a year ahead. But when we meet like this, they know I'm ahead of them. So, because we made the most out of the opportunity. All that we had to read, we read. All the prayer we had to pray, we prayed. All the fasting we had to fast, we did. And so, days of evil are not days where we just cry. We throw our hands in despair. And just, and just keep on praying, oh God, when you come and deliver us, let us also pause and reflect and see the opportunities. The opportunities in those days. Now, there's something here I want you to see, which in the Bible, which, which is um, very, very, very important. And I want you to just look at it. Let's turn our Bibles to Judges. Judges chapter 14. This is about Samson. Uh, but I'm just putting a little twist. There's something I want you to see there. Samson had seen a woman. So Samson went down to Timnah. And there saw, Judges 14, 1, a young Philistine woman. When he returned, he said to his father and mother, I have seen a Philistine woman in Timnah. Now get her for me as a wife. That's not my concentration. So I just wanted to get the background. His father and mother replied, Isn't there any acceptable woman among your relatives or among all your people? Must you go to the uncircumcised Philistines to get a wife? But Samson said to his father, Get her for me. She's the right one for me. His parents did not know. This is what I want. His parents did not know that this was from the Lord who was seeking an occasion to confront the Philistines for at that time they were ruling. So, it was from the Lord who was seeking an occasion to confront the Philistines. Now, Samson went down to Timnah together with his father and mother. As they approached the vineyards of Timnah, suddenly, I like that, suddenly, a young lion came roaring towards him. Now, we know that something is going to get a wife with his parents. So he's on the path to destiny. He's on the path to doing what God had orchestrated. Because the Bible says that it was from the Lord. And so something is approaching Timna, Where he has found a woman he wants to go and marry her with the parents. On the path to doing what God has put in his heart. Or what God has arranged. There are a lot of theological things around it. I don't want to go there. Suddenly a young lion came roaring. Now, so Samson is going. Well, he has not planned that a lion will come. He has not made any arrangements for a lion. He hasn't pre-planned that I'll meet a lion. All of a sudden a lion comes. That is how life is. You know, in life, there are many things that come roaring at us. Which we never planned for. One of them is coronavirus. There are few people, few, very few people who knew for certain, for sure, that 2020 will be like this. No, there are not many. Even those who saw visions and dreams, they didn't understand that it would be this way. And so a young lion comes roaring at him. Now what do you do? You have options. You either choose to cry out, Oh, why? Oh, why me? Oh, why me? Lion, what have I done to you? 
I mean, there are several responses. I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to marry. I'm just going to marry. I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to marry. Why are you roaring at me? But you see, the Bible says that the spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon him. So that he tore the lion apart with his bare hands. So he didn't need to prepare for it. His bare hands. As he might have torn a young goat. But he told neither his father nor his mother what had happened. Hey, Samson. No, how can you kill a lion? And then your parents who are with you don't hear anything about it. This is a special grace for handling challenges without making noise. There are people who when they go through something, they want everybody to know I am going through this. I am poor. This is what is happening to me. My mother didn't send me to school. My father didn't send me to school. And because of the, the virus, this has happened. And because of that, and because of that, and because of... Samson did not. He handled the challenge by the Spirit of God. Quietly. Killed it. And went and joined the parents. Now, this is where I want you to see. Sometime later, when he went back, verse 8, to marry her, he turned aside to look at the lion's carcass. And in it, he saw a swarm of bees and some honey. The very thing that wanted to kill him, when he confronted it, has now produced food for him. So that which was intended to kill him, has produced food for him. Opportunities in evil days. Opportunities. Finding good in evil days. He scooped out the honey with his hands and ate as he went along. When he rejoined his parents, he gave them some and they too ate. But he did not tell them that he had taken the honey from the lion's carcass. Now, the lion came roaring towards him. One person. It came towards him to kill him. When he killed it, the lion produced food, sweetness, not for him alone, but for his parents as well. There are opportunities and challenges we, we go through. The difficulties. This whole thing about lockdown and then all that. Sometimes, you know, people, people you comp I know, I know people's works, people's jobs are affected. You know, people's jobs are affected. People who sell particular kind of things will not get money. People who do all kinds of jobs might, might be locked down their workplaces. But you see, if we sit down and pause, we will find golden opportunities. Golden opportunities in these evil days. Now, if you go on Judges chapter 14, Samson makes a riddle. He finds a riddle out of his experience. He says, he replied, out of the eater, something to eat. Out of the strong, something sweet. It had become a riddle. Something that proud to this time was a challenge to him. A lion roaring at him. He had handled it, found food out of it, and it had become a riddle. It is my prayer wherever you are listening to me from, that God will grant you the grace to stand in these times. To stand this lion called coronavirus. So that we handle it so well. So by the time it ends, we'll find some honey out of it. By the time it ends, we find some food out of it. By the time it ends, it will become a proverb for you. It will become a riddle. May God help us to so opportunities in evil days. That lion that came roaring at him, that could kill him. He handled it and food came. So out of the eater, something sweet. Out of the corona, something sweet. Out of the strong corona, the virus that confounded people, something sweet. So the eater can become food. 
and the strong can become sweet. That's it. Now, let me just go to another portion of scripture and then I round up here. In Genesis chapter 19, sorry, chapter 39, we find a man there called Joseph who had been locked down. You know, I was, I was chatting with one apostle and he told me that he thinks that prison life will be very, 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 very serious. I mean, being in prison. Can you imagine that? I mean, just stay home two weeks. Some people cannot just, it's not like they have anything to do. They just can't stay home. Something, something inside tells them that go, just go out, go and walk. Just like that. Just go and walk around. I mean, there's something in us that doesn't like to be restricted, to put in a kind of box, something in us. And because, you know, um, there are a lot of openings to the directive for those in Accra. And you know, in a part of the world, lying and quekwanancing ourselves is a normal thing. I mean, if someone is in his car going somewhere and the police meet him and they ask him, why are you going to say, I'm going to the bank? People who use the bank and the, the hospital and pharmacies as excuses for anything. Beloved, I want to encourage you. Let us stay at home. Stay at home. Stay at home. Just discipline. At least learn a new thing. Learn. Learn a new thing to stay at home. Especially the sanguines and the cholerics. Very difficult. They can't just imagine. But thank God. In our days, we have mobile, I mean, mobile phones. You can, if you don't want to stay at home, you see, you can call, you can do a conference call and chat and talk and talk. That's another way of doing it. Or find, find a kind of hobby or something and do it. Now, Joseph had been locked down because Potiphar's wife um, wanted to, you know, have an affair with him. Verse 19 says that when his master heard the story, his wife told him, his wife told him, saying, this is how your slave treated me. He burned with anger. Joseph's master took him and put him in prison, locked down. The place where the king's prisoners were confined. So Joseph is locked down in prison this time around not the whole community one man is locked down for something he does not know anything about now with such a lockdown now look at joseph's background i wrote an article the other time look at joseph's background he's a young man hated by his brothers sold out to the ishmaelites they also sold him he came to serve in the house of Potiphar. He has been lied to. Now, no Bible in those days. Nothing. A young man who has gone through hatred. He has been hated. He has been sold. He has been lied on. Now he has been locked down. You would expect that after going through all these things plus a lockdown, the man will become very moody not greet anyone, not talk to anyone, locked down in prison. But while Joseph was there in prison, the Lord was with him. Hallelujah. These were evil days for Joseph. The Lord was with him. So the fact that you are going through a lockdown, a challenge, doesn't mean God, I mean, God has left us. God, um, and rather than when he's, 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 a knee is already on us. God is with us. But he was in a lockdown. He showed him kindness and granted him favor in the eyes of the prison warden. Now, if someone is in prison and the Bible says that God showed him kindness, you would expect that kindness means that God takes him out of the prison. But in the prison, God showed him kindness. But he was still in the prison. And so let us not think that, oh, once the thing has not gone, it means... God's eyes are not on us. No. In the midst of the lockdown, the Lord is with us. He is in us. He is on us. So Joseph went through all this. Even in the prison, his attitude made him a leader. He found opportunities in the lockdown. 
he found things to do in the lockdown when when the prison warden saw him say ah this young man though you have been locked down you have found opportunities to use your gifts and exercise your abilities let's make you a leader now in chapter 40 from verse 6 when joseph came to them so there were other prisoners or there were a lot of people in the lockdown but you know some had two of them had had dreams when joseph came to them the next morning he saw that they were dejected just dream oh, dream eh? something you you see overnight you are dejected about that what about those who go through the real experience now they had just had dreams one was bad one was good but they were all dejected because they couldn't understand the dream just a dream you are dejected joseph has not only gone through a dream he has been through the thing physically been hated been sold he has been lied on what do you think should happen to him so he asked pharaoh's officials who were in custody with him in his master's house why do you look so sad so he was finding opportunities during the lockdown using his gifts using his abilities though i am locked down though i am restricted though i don't i'm not allowed to do some things they answered we both had dreams they answered but there is no one to interpret them ah then joseph said then joseph said to them do not interpretations belong to god so what joseph was trying to say is that eh, me what i've been through it's not it's not a matter of dream so no no no, no. you are just a dream and you are dejected for us we have been through real life things and yet we are not dejected so they narrated their dreams and joseph used his gifts his abilities in the lockdown in the lockdown in the evil days of his life imprisoned he used his gifts and abilities to help others and that's what i want us to do you know in these times let's look for opportunities opportunity to, to, to be a blessing to others an opportunity to be a blessing to someone give to someone help someone call someone let's help one another amen yes he didn't say hey and so you you turn a blind eye to someone who is suffering no he said so i have been through real life experience bitter experiences and i've been locked down i choose to use my gifts to be a blessing to humanity to be a blessing to humanity may god help us to find opportunities in this whole thing find out now as a family okay hey, maybe we have not we have not been together for a long time now that we are together what can we do those who are musicians find find an opportunity in this one to write songs i know by the time we end this thing songs songs will be flying all over compose songs write songs put things together those who are into um, designing this is the time to think stay at home and design things do some wild stuff you can stay overnight and do some overnight something because you know following day you are not going anywhere let's find I was reading an article and someone said that the earth is even happy for this lockdown. The earth is happy because the gases emitted from cars and factories that pollute the environment. Now, the, even the planet earth is, is, is at rest. So there are opportunities. Don't just sit down and cry. What will I do? What will happen to me? And then what do that? Don't just worry. Find out. Find out. Now let's go back to Ephesians, and then I, I round up. Ephesians, where we read from? Ephesians 5. But be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise. So, wisdom is required in these times. Making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish. This is a good admonition. Do not be foolish. I like the Bible. Yeah. If you are not careful, these times you'll be very foolish. And one of the foolish ways is to sit on social media all throughout. 
No, if you are if you are marketing something or posting something or uh, propagating the gospel, that's fine. No, but where you don't do anything, you just wake up, eat, do unproductive things, eat again, do unpro- and sleep. If you're not careful, you will just sleep and gain weight. You can live very foolishly in these times. Waste all the time. Waste all the opportunities. And not learn. By the time this whole thing will be over, you realize that you never learned anything. Nothing has been added to your life. Nothing and more has been subtracted. Not, just, just there. Just there. Just there. Mm-hmm. 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 So therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. These are times to one. What is your will in this pandemic? What is your will in these times? What do you want us to do, O oh God? Then he says, do not be drunk with wine, which leads to debauchery. So wine here represents physical wine, but it can represent, so there are so many things which are also wine. We, we are talking about addictions. Wine is addictive. So don't, don't allow an addiction at this time. If you're not careful, you pick up a lot of addictions. You will now be addicted to something. Now, they are, they are good addictions. If you're addicted to prayer, fine. You're addicted to reading good stuff, that's fine. But if you're not careful, you will foolishly be addicted to things, wrong things. By the time the whole thing is over, you now have to manage an addiction. So do not be drunk with wine, which leads to drudgery. Be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Then I like this 20 always giving thanks to God. Now, how many people have paused to give thanks to God in these times? Everybody's praying, fire, fire, God. But you know, let's give thanks. Not for the virus killing people, not for this whole thing, but in. The Bible didn't say give thanks for, give in. So in the midst of the situation, I thank you. Two weeks. Two weeks at home. Hey, we can read books. So we can improve ourselves. You can learn how to play a musical instrument. You can learn how to do something. You can add something to your life. By the time you are done, you just come out and you know that, ah, if not for the death, let this whole thing come again. People will be wishing it comes again, if not for the death factor in the whole thing. Because we found opportunities in them. I want us to begin to pray and thank God. Let's begin to pray and thank God and give him all the praise and the glory. Give him all the praise and all the glory. Just begin to pray wherever you are in your room. Begin to pray. There are opportunities in these evil days. There are opportunities. Samson handled that lion and it was an opportunity for him to get honey, food out of the eater, and sweetness out of the strong. I want us to begin to bless God. Oh, we thank you, Lord. We give you praise and glory. In the midst of this pandemic, in the midst of the lockdown, in the midst of financial crisis, in the midst of health challenges, in the midst of it all, we give you thanks and we give you praise. Oh, we bless your name. Lokasa katondi makaya. Bora babari ando sini mikola bayanta na mahaya. Ilokotande basaka tozaya. Hey mamande ramando sande kabosha talababaya. Re mamondo la mama mana masaya. Hayo se katondi malala la la bai. We choose to give you praise ya samato kale ya bahaya. Hayo no no mo sanda la babanda la babaya. Ora bala base ma mo stande kabaya. Ola bali ande ni mondo santa kataya. Hela mandori ando 
Shanda la mama maya. Eki o se ina mande imboya sa takaboshi. Alei mini ni manto ne bayado zayan. Oh, shala bala bala baba. Ayanda na mason tolo mosanda la baba. Ayanda la mamondo rando ni mama. Shale mayando no mosanda hayan. We are at rest. Mashando la mosaya ayanda mahayan. Holande ni mondo sayan Hale bayo katende mando sayan Ando ni mamranda na manamana masayan The days of evil do not naturally lead people to worship and to thank God But we choose to thank you in the midst of the whole thing E kayo ni ni mimranda bayako sayan E rabababa sheri ando senemetaya Ayo rabababa Mama mande raba baba ban ayanda la baba sera mamondo lo mosaya e kayondo ni mamranda sate kabo sandan aye babo sataya anda la baba baba la baka panda la baba baba la shaya o saye ni mamba la baba do fonya me ni from God but if you're a child of God you don't lack wisdom 
I want us to pray that, oh God, oh God, cause us to walk in your wisdom. These are times when we need to be wise. Wise. Know what to do at what time. Then, you see, wisdom will help us to see the opportunities in the days of evil. We are saying, oh God, 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 open my eyes. So Paul said that I pray that the Lord will grant you the spirit of wisdom. The spirit of wisdom and revelation. God, let us know. Let us, let us act wisely. Let your wisdom be stirred up in us. Let revelation into this whole thing as to what to do be stirred up in us. So that we will not walk as foolish people in these times. I want us to pray right now in the name of Jesus. Let's pray that the wisdom of God will be stirred up mightily in us. We will know what to do. Kalaba shakata, ipalo zinimi kabahai. Mande raba baba la bakosa. Mande ria baba sende ne bakota. Wisdom, wisdom, wisdom to find opportunities. Wisdom to see revelation, insights, and uncovering. To see your hand at work. To see the opportunities. To see the great things you are doing, oh God. Abakasito laba akapayas. Mayele mene me korean dele me zaya. Ipada baba laba korean de sende me kayas. Remene meni mama laba shendele me kapaya. Wisdom, wisdom in our businesses, wisdom in our families, wisdom in handling family issues, wisdom in handling business, wisdom in handling time, in the use of time. Let your wisdom in us cause us to walk after your will, O God. Oh, say Abahanda, wisdom for your people, oh God. Leke tapalu anda na masanda na mama ma. Ike lebe lebe si ando ni mamrande ya bo shatas. Abanda na makono bo shanda la mama ma. Ubala ba kipondo na bo shanda la baba. Ani mo raba daba la kasi jolo bo shanda. Ayanda na makora baba ba. Ile li ando sate ne me kola baba ba. Ebele si ata kasunde ya dos. Rebele bele bele si ando ni mamrande ya dos. Iye bondo na bo sata. 
Now we want to pray and intercede. You know, these are times which are challenging for many people. And you know, when people are hungry and people are in need of basic necessities of life, sometimes you are unable to think about any other thing. It's all on the hunger. But you see, the Bible says that Psalm 147 verse 9, verse 9, he gives to the animals food and to the young ravings which cry, he gives them even animals. God provides. We are praying. You know, there are people who are going to be struggling now. For, for those who are rich, those who have money, who can afford, fine, they've gone to buy things and stocked up. But there are people who simply cannot stock up things like that. We are praying that in this season, Lord, let there be abundance. People who are struggling, people who are crying, they don't even have money. Lord, may you provide. We might not know all of them as a church. We might put up some interventions for that. But we might not know everybody. We are praying God all over in these cities that are locked down. Oh God, supply. Someone is crying. Maybe their children don't even have money to, uh, food to eat. Not even money to buy anything. We are saying, oh God, that gives food to the animals. Oh God, that supplies bread to the eater and seed to the sower. May you supply. supply. We are releasing a supply right from this place. Let's lift up our voice and begin to pray right now. People who are struggling, oh God. People who are in need. In the name of Jesus, we standing, oh God, and we intercede. We pray for families. We pray for individuals struggling in their finances, struggling to even get food to eat and water to drink may you provide may you supply supernaturally oh god stay up supply in the name of jesus when the israelites said we will eat meat you told moses tell them that tomorrow by this time they will eat meat and oh god you caused your wind to gather quails from the sea and you provided you gave meat Provide, oh God, provide. Let there be a release. Let your wind, that east wind, bring supply. Let it bring the supply. Maya kasota ya bahaka. Hey, Baba Maria, no send the name kapa. Iba la basara ba yanta na makapa. Iya banda la bashanda la baba. Ika pari anda na masa. Iya bala mamanda la bashanda na baba. Ika tanda na maseta la baba ya. You know, there are opportunities in every challenge. But sometimes, people take undue advantage. You see, what others may call opportunities might be just undue advantage. For instance, there's a lockdown in Accra, Kumasi. But you see, let us pray for Ghana. At least I know Ghana. We have been in Ghana for some time. It might be an opportunity for some people. I heard that even those who have been quarantined, someone could pay 20 Ghana cities, 40 Ghana cities, and then they are allowed to go out and come back. I mean, how do we, how do we prosper as a nation? Now in this lockdown, where... We are supposed to have people enforcing it. In our part of the world, 10 Ghana cities can break a law. We are praying that, oh God, let your fear fill this place. 
Lord, those who will be managing, people can take undue advantage. I, I, I catch you. you. Give me 20 cities. Otherwise, I'm ruined. Give me 20. The people start collecting. Then the whole thing is defeated. We are praying for our nation. Oh God, let righteousness reign. Let your fear fill your people. Our leaders from our president right down. Lord, fill your people with wisdom, with your fear. Let us fear you in these times. If we have to observe something, God, cause them, stir up your spirit in them and let us see, let us have peace. We're also coming against, you know, commotion and confusion around where there's a fight. And sometimes when people are giving authority to enforce laws, they, they sometimes they just do it brutally, with brutality, beatings and shootings. We are praying that, oh God, may all these things be averted in our nation and let there be peace in our nation let's begin to pray right now we pray in the name of jesus for our dear nation ghana this affected area and beyond oh god rain peace rain peace rain righteousness let your fear feel the leaders and the law enforcement agencies in the name of jesus let your fear feel them let your fear feel Asua tande mokota ya telemikaza Hei babanda na maziandos Kaya la babada babada baba Anda la baba Kolo bolo bolo bo shanda na banaba Anda la bala babanda na masaya Ora bala bala bini 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 Mande rabala babali babrakataya